Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies, and in this episode, we're going to conduct a bit of an experiment. We're going to try to shade a large number of Napoleonic models using a wash from a Tylon 502 oils. Will this work? Won't this work? I don't know. I've never done anything like this before. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. This year, I was really excited for Christmas because I had a lot of model building products on my Christmas list. As is typical with a Canadian Christmas, in my stocking, I found foam board adhesive. I couldn't be happier. After that, I went on to open my other gifts. Printer resin, and something everybody always likes to get during the festive season. A can of beans. But then I noticed another present. Something that had been provided for me from my mother and father-in-law. A package of Abtailung 502 oil paints. I had hit the jackpot. This is something I had always wanted. If you like my videos, please consider leaving a tip with super thanks. Now it's June and the time has come to try a few projects with my oil paints. I do have a bit of an issue here. You see, I've never used oil paint and I didn't have a subject for them. So I went looking for the perfect opportunity. I didn't want to just use these as a substitute for my acrylics or trade them out for any other tried and true methods. You see, I'm pretty happy with my techniques and I didn't want to change just because I could. What I needed was a problem that could use a better solution. Fortunately, it didn't take me too much work to come up with a good option for this. You see, every model painter hates one thing and that's lining in. Sometimes lining in is referred to as pin washing. This method of building contrast by making shadows and creases darker is super important and the smaller the model the more important lining in gets. I've discussed this in other videos but the go-to products I use here are acrylic inks or panel lining enamels. These work great but they do have a drawback. A drawback that belongs to the process, not the product. Lining in takes a ton of time. Systematically taking a fine brush and putting paint where you want it obviously takes precision, and precision requires patience, even more so if the model has a lot of complex detail. Now, I don't mind lining in on character models or jobs with small model counts. But when it comes to terrain or projects with high model counts, you kind of need a shortcut. Recently, I've been building up my Napoleonics collection for Black Powder, a game that needs a high model count, and being historical models in super fancy uniforms, these have a ton of detail. So now I had a topic, and I realized I could use oils to replace traditional lining in on my Napoleonic troops. I knew from a little bit of study on the internet that adding thinner to oil paints creates a pin wash that is drawn by capillary action into the lowest points on the model. And this would likely speed up my process. The rest of this video documents my experiment with this. Let's take a look. I prepared the models in batches of 10 with acrylic layer painting just as I would prepare any other model. 
but I intentionally did not do any shading until the entire batch was ready. This created a lot of great finely detailed models, but they look just a little flat, because without lining in, the definition is pretty dull. When the painting was done, I needed to protect my work before I could use the oils, so I gave all the models two coats of satin varnish. The varnish would preserve the acrylics from the chemicals in the thinner, and also create a surface that would be smooth enough to aid the washes. After the varnish had dried overnight, I mixed up the oil paints into a wash. For the brown areas, I decided to use Abtilung 502 Sepia. It just didn't seem quite dark enough, so I mixed it about 50-50 with smoke oil paint and added the thinner until it flowed freely. When I was happy, I made the wash for the rest of the model, which was just straight smoke oil paint. Again, I mix it up until I like how it flowed. In hindsight, smoke maybe wasn't dark enough. Black might have been better, but this is an experiment, so we'll talk more about this later. Taking this mixture, I picked it up with a brush, wicked away the extra, and dabbed it into the recesses on the model. Brown went on the packs and rifles, and the smoke mixture went on everything else. Capillary action did the rest of the work. And I must say, this worked very well. So well that I actually began doing more of a targeted wash than precision brushwork. And here I saw a serious advantage. This process was blazingly fast. So fast I could do the whole batch of 10 models in just one pass. The brushwork was quick, but one of the advantages of oils is that the paint dries slow. I gave each model at least 10 or 15 minutes to dry, then I took out a wedge-shaped makeup brush, lightly dampened it with thinner, and worked this over the raised areas that might have been tinted by the paint. Honestly, there wasn't much of this to do because the oil settled so nicely. And when this was complete, I was pretty much done. The whole shading project took just minutes, and then I had to leave it to dry overnight. The next day, I based the models as I normally would and gave them a coat of matte spray. And now I was ready to compare the results and complete my experiment. And in the end, my impression is that this experiment's pr end product was okay. The oil settled in and built contrast, and I must admit, speed was the main advantage. For character models, I likely won't use this on its own, but in combination with other lining techniques, I think it would probably work pretty good. For big batches of rank and file models though, I think I have a new technique to add to my arsenal. The result, however, left a much subtler line of definition than I'm used to. Now, this isn't the fault of the product. I think the paint worked awesome. It's likely because of the proportions I mixed. Or maybe that I used smoke and not black paint. So what's next? Well, art is about continual improvement, so I'll be doing more research and refinements to fine-tune these oils to get the result I'm looking for. One thing is for sure, I can be certain I'm on the right track. Keep your eyes on the channel for more oil paint experiments, and of course terrain projects, product reviews, and painting tutorials. These will be showing up, as always, in the immediate future. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is your source for miniature, terrain building, and diorama content. And we can't do it without your support. We want to build a community to ensure that the wonderful art of building a miniature is accessible to everybody. To participate, please consider joining on Patreon. For $4 a month, our Patreon members benefit from 
10% off at Joe Saunders Terrain in the Etsy store, 5% off paints and hobby supplies at Torchlight Games, free access to STL files, a mention in our credits, and early access to our videos. Please check it out and consider joining. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Please remember to subscribe, press the bell button so you get immediate notification on our videos, and until next time, remember to keep building life in miniature.